savant is an individual with exceptional ability in one or more fields that coexists with some form of disability. Dr. Darrell Treffert, Islands of Genius. After being told our youngest was on the autistic spectrum, I learned about autism. Not only did I have the symptoms of autism, but I had actually become to be disturbed by the fact that I had these intense skills and interests in painting and studying stock market charts. With no training or practice, how could I make paintings that people compare to Monet and Van Gogh when these are the first paintings off my brush? After being diagnosed as a savant in 2004, I met and exhibited with other savants and understood myself more. The perfect storm. Autism, alcoholism, mercury poisoning, and celiac disease. While a 12-step program saved my life, celiac disease almost took it. A gluten-free diet, lots of great doctors and professionals, I recovered and weaned myself off high levels of pain medication that I needed for so long. I literally danced my way back to life. exhibition of my work to help people understand the Savant Syndrome. At the age of 30, I had a desire to paint, but also had a fear to try. Being in a 12-step program, I shared this with my sponsor, a writer. She assigned me some writing exercises to explore my fear of painting and unblock my creativity, which I did. I knew there would be more work in my future from my sponsor unless I got past this fear. So I pulled out some old watercolor paints and began to paint. I started painting. I took a, um, a picture of the sun going down over the islands in the, in the Florida Keys. And um, you can see the, uh, the beams of light shooting through the clouds into the water. And um, I painted this, uh, and it has a little tiny, tiny island way in the back. I was um, pregnant when I took the picture, pregnant when I painted it. I call that painting the awakening. It kind of represents to me the future and, um, and, and what, what was to come. wanted to have more color in my artwork, so more intensity of color. So I immediately switched to oil paint, which is uh, when I painted my daughter sleeping. It's called watching her sleep. And uh, I put a light inside the closet, opened the door so I could have the light uh, cascading through her bars of her crib. And I took a shot and painted her. And I, again, was surprised that I was able to accomplish what, what I accomplished. In that painting, I didn't think that I could paint my daughter sleeping. Thought that maybe if I did it in hues of blue, hues of blue, you could see uh, that it was a child sleeping. But when I got to her cheeks, I could not paint her cheeks blue. So I began painting the whole painting in color and uh, was surprised that I was able to actually pull it off. And that was my first oil painting. After I painted uh, my daughter sleeping, I uh, painted uh, Texas wildflowers. And I wanted to paint something like uh, Vincent Van Gogh's Sunflowers, but I didn't want to paint sunflowers, so I found this beautiful field of purple thistle and painted that, um, so I call that Texas Wildflowers. 
And that turned out well. So then I, I decided that I might try painting a figure, a person, a nude perhaps. But uh, I was too shy and too cheap to hire a model. So I threw a sheet over a coffee table, took a timer and used myself. And I painted the third painting, which is called The Nude. And um, that, that's myself, because I, I took a timer picture and uh, painted this painting. And uh, I've had some very interesting things happen as a result of that painting. But, uh, it, it's, it's been very, it's been fun exhibiting my work with other savants and uh, one thing about that painting is one of the other savants looked at a compilation of maybe three of my paintings on the wall including that one and he says to me, how could you have done that to yourself? <laughs> so after the third painting I, I decided that I could uh, paint a nude, and I asked my girlfriend, Tammy, if I could uh, paint her. And uh, so she, she said, no problem, which is where uh, I have brushing her hair. That painting, uh, if, if, if you look at that painting, there's different parts of that painting that resemble different types of strokes in Impressionism. So I, in the beginning, I considered that just a study because I was experimenting with the different types of uh, Impressionism in that painting. After I painted Brushing Her Hair, I painted Autumn in the Woods and uh, I just took a snapshot hiking through the woods in the autumn and painted that. Uh, I began showing my work and uh, people were buying all sizes of the, my work. And I wondered what would happen if I blew it up 400%. And um, they bought that too. So my work is extremely detailed. So I'm able to blow it up. And uh, in that, you see every single stroke is multiple colors. I don't like to use flat one color in every stroke. Every stroke has definition and has multiple colors in it. And I enjoy working with color that way. And, um, and so I knew what was in every stroke. I knew how much work I put into each detail and I wanted to blow my work up. So um, this has been something that's been really successful for me too. After I painted Autumn in the Woods, I painted Autumn on Fire, and uh, I stretched the colors in that painting. Um, as you will see, the trunks are blue and the leaves are orange, and um, that's because I'm trying to use opposite colors, and you know, which I think really stimulates the eye. So uh, that is where I really began to even pull in more unrealistic colors to my paintings to make them more exciting, I guess. I painted uh, lily pads and Amos Lake. I, I, I like that painting because it reminds me of, of many of Monet's paintings of lily pads. Uh, and it's a very soothing painting, uh, very quiet, very soothing. Uh, but that one too, is, it looks nice blown up. One of the paintings I painted is called Winter Trees. It's very detailed. You can see every trunk, almost every uh, branch on these trees, which go back a long distance. This was my view from my lazy boy when I was sick. I was sick for years. I was laid up. And I only painted when I had enough energy and enough in me to paint. And uh, it took me a long time to finish that painting, but it, it reminds me 
of my illness. And it sort of signifies to me um, symbolically um, that although there was no leaves on the trees, there was still life beneath. And I had life left in me. So that, that's what I can take away from that painting. And I continue to paint uh, one right after the other. as I recovered and uh, I got off all the pain medication that I had been on and it took a long time. So um, as you will see and we peel through my works, uh, there are some paintings that have been painted from pictures that I got from, uh, you know, like an old statue that I took out. I made her come alive. And of course, Einstein. Um, Einstein is someone I wanted to paint, but I could not get my own picture. So I paint Einstein, I use pictures that are someone else has taken. Um, but I always try to be original. Um, and I, I don't plan it out very much. I just, I just start and I work from, from the back forward so where it's furthest away, I start and then I, I move forward and uh, whatever seems most logical.
I hope that people hear my story about wanting to paint, and being afraid to paint, uh, not thinking it was worth the time or the effort, or somebody would think it was stupid. I hope that, that people take away from this that it's worth doing what you love. It's worth doing whatever it is that you love. And that, that's what I hope people take away from this. That don't let your fear override you and, and know that we all have today. And, and the best thing we can do is uh, uh, make the most out of every day. suggestions what I give to other inspiring artists. Basically what I've already said. Be original, do your own stuff, do what you love, and just keep working. And, and really respect yourself. Respect yourself. Respect what you want to do with your art. Don't let other people tell you what to do with your art. Don't let other people tell you what to paint, because that is not yours. quite a few things. Um, when I am trading, I do enjoy looking at the charts and patterns. It's, it's, it's uh, because I can read it so well, it's uh, very interesting to me. So some things that are interesting to me aren't as interesting to other people. But uh, I will uh, trade and paint and listen to music all at the same time and uh, chat with my uh, trader buddies and make jokes. But I really enjoy living in the country. I, I live in a peaceful place called Blueberry Hill. I have four dogs. do this interview is uh, is challenging for me because uh, it's, it's difficult for me to put myself out there. I very much enjoy my solitude. I enjoy my privacy. and um, But in the same regard, I do want to get out and meet more people. And they say that people on the autistic spectrum can be very observant. And I do notice a lot of things. I notice a lot of patterns. And um, so it's just fun to be me in a lot of regards because, uh, because I enjoy watching people and I enjoy uh, thinking about what's going to happen next. One thing I'd like to say that is if you have an autistic child, uh, you know, one thing it's good to, to focus on originality, to 
it's original, I have them sign it. You know, somebody else did it, make them, give them credit. Um, I, I, it's important to keep autistic individuals in the regular community and uh, give them opportunity to be normal. And uh, in, in, in my life with my kids, that's worked out really well. Thank you.